week's April the 13th Picks edition of the MLB Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick em for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, NHL, golf and more. Sign up today using our promo code MLB SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by the premier arbitrage sports betting tool Avo. Use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform for free at arbsversusodds.com. That's A R B S V S O D D S.com. Plus, in honor of Mars this week, the Golf Gambling Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sportsgamblingpodcast.com forward slash masters. Welcome, everybody, to the MLB Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Malcolm Bamford, coming to you from Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Today is Friday, April the 12th, and we are here to have a scoot around all the action for Saturday the 13th. Joining me, not done a show for a little while, so looking forward to talking to Mr. Scott Reichel. Scott, how are you doing? I uh, doing pretty well. Looking forward to breaking down the games for Saturday. My Yankees look good, so can't complain too much. Where I know do that they? They do. Uh, their game got canceled tonight, though, so they're gonna have a doubleheader tomorrow. So we'll see what happens there. But overall, can't complain. Yankees look good. Judge hasn't even been that good, and they've still been winning a bunch of games. So overall, can't complain. I won my NL East. Uh, best bet already, so that feels pretty good yeah, to get that off my back. But yeah, can't complain. I was going with you. You did. Um, I have cleared a little space in my diary, in my little notebook. I've cleared a little corner for whichever little magical bet you put out tonight, Scott. Because the last couple of shows we've done together, you find one little nugget that um, intrigues me. So I've got a space cleared. Um, so you better have something good for me tonight. Yes, good. Um, I'm enjoying the golf. I've got the golf on the telly as we speak. How's your Masters going? Are you in it? I cannot say that I have any Masters action, but Tiger made the cut. So I'm in it through him, I guess. We get to see two more okay. days of Tiger. Yeah, I've not. I've only got a couple of outrides, but they're nowhere near. Um, but I, I would have taken the chalkiest thing imaginable. Oh, Sheffler's point? Okay, sure. I'll take Sheffler to win. I wouldn't have really pushed the envelope with creativity. I would not have had Bryson. So that would never have been an option yeah. for me. I think I could have seen myself potentially taking Homa, but in reality, I would have just taken Scheffler and just moved on because he's so much better than everyone else. Yeah, I've seen a few fancy price Homa tickets knocking around. I'll have to get back involved again tomorrow, I think. Um, I've got the match tomorrow, Newcastle beat Tottenham tomorrow lunchtime. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, I've been to kids football tonight with Bob. Um, it's We got back in about half an hour ago, about 9.30. Uh, Friday night game, and he's got a 9 a.m. kickoff in the morning. So talk about the short turnaround. He literally got 11 and a half hours uh, between getting home tonight and his next kickoff in the morning. Uh, well, I have so to ask you, though, how's the club doing? They got beat 2-1 tonight, oh, unfortunately. There's no, the there no way the total was at two and a half, though, but BTTS might have been a decent price. Both teams to score over two and a half. It's a system play. Um, yeah. In the, in the under-12s. That's quite a low-scoring game for the under-12s. It's normally a bit of a basketball score. Um, but it was good quality tonight. Uh, really good quality. But, yeah, busy weekend. Um, looking forward to tonight's baseball. Actually, I've got, following on from last night's show, um, I like to pick in tonight's games and the Friday night games. And I'm just going to update that now. And I might run this by you. And it's in the Colorado uh, Blue Jays game. And at Ryan Feltner pitching for the... Uh, Rockies tonight. Uh, he struck out 10 Tampa Bay Rays last time, Scott. Um, so I was looking for a strikeout prop on him, I mentioned last night, but there was no lines last night. I've now had a look, and um, I'm getting over four and a half strikeouts at plus 130. Um, and I'm trying to see what I'm missing, because I don't think I'm missing much. The fact is, he's perfectly capable. You no, you can't, by accident, strike out 10 Tampa Bay Rays, even if that was a lot mm -hmm. if it regresses even a few over four and a half uh looks incredible so um that's just a little update on that so i've got involved in felton over four and a half k's tonight certainly at that price anyway uh plus 130 
Uh, we made a thousand subs on uh, YouTube, Scott. So that was a nice little uh, milestone for the show. Everyone who's followed us in the last couple of weeks, we really appreciate it um, because it has made a huge difference. And we've got some fancy new artwork as well, which looks really nice. Um, I, didn't, Trev, I didn't draw it, so don't give me any credit for that. I can't draw to save my life. No, I'm not particularly arty. Uh, Trev, Trev noticed the uh, the artwork. TBDBJ was first in the chat. Captain Insano followed him in. Michael, uh, a new name on me, Michael Glowacki. Glowacki. Don't know if it's a hard or soft W, Michael. And my current favourite uh, friend, the Forklift Certified Gambling Podcast, is in as well. Um, for tonight's show, then, we're going to do things just a little bit differently because it's a Friday night. Last year, we did Lock Dog Total a lot on a Friday because we're conscious of people having time to consume the show on a weekend. And it's uh, we've got to make the show on a Friday as well when I'm doing things like ferrying the boy backwards and forwards to football. Um, so we are still going to get around all the games. But maybe not sequentially. I've made my best bets or my favourite, my favourite games to handicap, and Scott's done the same. So one by one, we'll pick them off um, until we've got around all of the games. I've seen lines for the majority of stuff now. Um, so Scott, you have the luxury this time of you can take us anywhere you like on the card and give us your first pick. I'm flattered uh, that you gave me the opportunity to go first. Uh, so I think Why? for this one. I'm actually going to go with the dog here. It's going to be a bit of a bolder play because we know how bad the Rockies are away from home. But I can't believe the Blue Jays are minus 190 or minus 200. With Francis on the mound? What, are you kidding me? Francis is minus 190? Like, I understand the argument is, well, the Rockies are terrible. Like I get it. They're one of the worst teams in the league. They were decent against Arizona over the week, over the last couple of days. They didn't win many of those games, but they hung in there. Games were close, you know. I, I Once again, that was in cores, but the Blue Jays are laying 200 with Francis. Francis' numbers are atrocious. He's 0-2 with an ERA of about 13. Dakota Hudson's 0-2 with a 2.38 ERA, uh, which is why, once again, wins don't matter anymore for the Cy Young because they're both 0-2, and one pitcher has an ERA roughly 12 lower than the opponent. Yeah, give me Rockies' first five and full game. I just think this line's insane. 200, I'll pass. Uh, give me the Rockies' money line at around... 160, 170. Scott, that is the exact same big underdog play that I've got. This is a great start. Um, plus 160 is the price I've got for Colorado. I quite like the um, over on the total as well, but I just think Dakota Hudson had He's been good. two good starts. Um, and the one in uh, at the Cubs is the one that caught my eye. Because it's a road start and not an easy environment, but pitched five and a third only gave up four hits. It doesn't strike many out, but you can keep Colorado in this, and that's all you need to do. Because Francis, um, he did win the fifth rotation spot coming out of spring. There was high hopes on him. Um, but he's had two absolute shockers, eight and a third combined over the two games. Twelve earned runs, four homers, four walks. So it's not just one thing, he's given up a little bit of everything. Um, in Toronto currently have the worst bullpen war in MLB as well. Uh, so it's not like you can bank on the pen to get them out of it. Um, yeah, you have to take some sort of Colorado uh, punt here. You Team mentioned the total, first five. if you want to play it safe, but yeah, I, I, I just can't um, this. Yeah. So Colorado plus 160 uh, was, was my play. Um, right, we'll move across next to... We can snake draft it, so you can go next and then we'll just figure it out. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to go with a game which is a... It's the one of the early games. It's a second game off tomorrow. Um, it's a two-tennis and first pitch between the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago White Sox. And really, it was, it was the interesting pitching matchup that caught my eye first. It wasn't necessarily a favourite bet, but it was the presence of Nick Lodolo back... Um, Nick Lodolo has been injured, but will make his first start for Cincinnati um, tomorrow. And he's just a really interesting pitcher. He's been he's had a lot of hype over the couple of years. He's never really had himself in a position to to put together a good run of games. Started seven games last year, um, and he wasn't right. He clearly wasn't right either. Ended up with a six twenty nine ERA. Gave up lots of homers. 
But someone like Lodolo is going to be key if Cincinnati are going to be good. And Cincinnati have started okay. We know they're a lot of fun. They've got some good pitches. Um, if they if they can get a tune out of Lodolo, that's going to go a massive way to helping the Reds out this season. Um, a couple of warm-up starts. He went, what, five and a third on March the 31st. And had he went 64 pitches last week, but did run into some trouble. He seemed to get tired quickly. He hit the last two batters he faced. They wanted him to go five innings, and he couldn't get out the third. Um, so I came into this game wanting to take Lodolo, but the more I looked at it, the more I didn't feel comfortable doing it. Um, and on the opposite side is Garrett Crochet for the White Sox, who might be the only bright spot that the White Sox have at the moment. Um, Everyone else is Because injured. he's... Yeah, or terrible, which, yeah, uh, or both. Um so Crochet has been outstanding um, in, his, in his couple of starts. Uh, th- sorry, three games he's started now. 18 innings he's pitched. He's given up four home runs, 21 strikeouts to one walk. That's his stat. That's not happening by accident. Uh, so these results aren't a fluke at all. Um, so the White Sox first five. Um, I haven't seen a line on that. The plus 110 for the game. Um, so I imagine there'll be a similar price, Scott, in the first five, or even a White Sox team total. Um, like I say, I came into this wanting a little bit of Lodolo. The more I saw it, um, I thought I would take another little underdog here. So I'll get involved with the White Sox, Scott. Yeah, I think my favorite play in that game is going to be crochet strikeouts, uh, just looking at whatever the line might be. Uh, the Reds strike out a ton. Uh, the Reds are striking out the sixth most in the entire league. And you mentioned the strikeout to walk ratio. He's been really good. I don't want to compare him exactly to Chris Sale because that's a cop-out since, of course, Chris Sale used to be on the White Sox. There are some similarities based on how he's been pitching. So a lot of strikeouts and the Reds strike out a lot. So I think that's a good combo. Maybe he gets to 10 in this game. Who knows? But I can definitely see him having a big strikeout game in that one. Uh, Should I move on to my second play? Yeah, go for it. Cool. Uh, So for my second play, I think I have to go with the Cubs uh, with, uh, once again, one of the Best pitchers in the league so far this season. Uh, Imanaga has been tremendous. Uh, I can't really go against him in that one. I know you were very high on the Mariners entering the season. Season's still young. Long way to go. Uh, but the Mariners so far this season don't exactly look, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Good uh, so far this season. Oh, they, it's a good word to use. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, once again, they can improve. It's still very early. But the offense has been kind of underwhelming. And even Og has been really good. So I think it's good value. Uh, Hancock has not been good either. Uh, you're looking at him having an ERA over 11. And the Cubs are 130, give or take. I think it's a pretty cheap line. Imanaga right now would be my pick, the very, very early pick for NL Rookie of the Year. And we'll see what happens. But the Cubs have been kind of dicey. But at times this season, the Mariners have been underwhelming. But the pitching matchup is such a big advantage for the Cubs. I'll go with the Cubs in this one at a cheap price. Um, Captain Insano was in on the Cubs with him in Arga before you uh, put that one up. So uh, there's another vote for it. Again, Scott, it's another one of my plays. It's in my top four plays of the night here. Um, I was in on Seattle and it was the pitching rotation. Um, it looked really rock solid. Um, what I didn't factor in was not, they haven't scored any runs. Um, they were projected um, to be the, one of the lowest scoring teams. But with that pitching rotation, it, it they haven't given themselves much margin for error. Um, so, time to get it right, possibly. Um, J-Rod is cold. Someone pointed that out in the chat, was talking about, might have been Randy actually, talking about how cold J-Rod had been. But Imanaga, the impressive thing with Imanaga is that start against the Dodgers. So, he's had um, only given up four hits on 10 innings so far with 12 strikeouts. But one, one of those starts was against Colorado, so maybe. Uh, but he held the Dodgers. Um so you have to trust it. Um, Seattle have showed that they're capable of being shut down by a good pitcher as well. Um, they got uh, Hancock was smashed at Cleveland. Uh, sorry, he had a good, a decent start um, in one, but was very hittable in the other. And I just think the Cubs, it was a little bit chalky minus 140, but if you're telling me there's a minus 130 kicking about, um, yeah, I agree that Cubs is a decent play in that one. I see minus right, 126 on FanDuel if you wanted the minus best one. Minus 126. Oh, shortening up all the time. I like that. Um, we move on once I've told you first about 
Um, the Golf Gambling Podcast. We've just said we're sweating out a few golf bets here. And they're giving away a punter. Uh, a good one, a tailor-made Spider X. Um, so enter uh, the competition to win that over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. Great show, the Golf Gambling Podcast. Uh, Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play fantasy sports and the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Just pick between two and five players, go higher or lower on the stat tool, any sport you want, loads of props in there. Uh, and you can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. You can make rivals picks, which puts two players against each other. Um, so loads of good stuff on Underdog Fantasy. Um, sign up today with our promo code MLB SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant pick em special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store. Don't forget to register with our code MLB SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick em special. Must be 18 or over, present the state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply, concerned with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Um, we got a review recently, Scott, and someone complained about my accent again. I thought we'd put that to bed. No one's complained about my accent for about two years. I thought everyone's just learned to deal with it. And then someone popped up. And I think the word they used was thick. But do I have a thick accent, Scott? Uh, it's thicker than mine. <laughs> it just reminded me, because the Golf Gambling Podcast, I thought my accent was thick until I heard Boston Capper's accent. Um, if you've got me and Boston Capper on the same show, um, I think we'd be hemorrhaging listeners. But yeah, I See, thought we'd... Uh, I, I just Go have me. a question when it comes to reviewing that and leaving that in the review. What is he supposed? What are you supposed to do about it? Like nothing. Like what kind of feedback is that? It's like, oh, listen, yeah, yeah. he's got good points. I can't understand them, but I'm sure you know. Like, what are you supposed to do about that? Nothing. Like, wh what? Are you supposed to change your voice? You're gonna you're gonna go full on actor mode. I don't I don't know what you're supposed to do about that. Yeah, I've we're sort of. Uh, the the Queen's English or oh, the King's. You're going to come back next year with like a full Texas accent. Like that's going to be full your... Texas accent. Yeah, some some like extremely thick like part of either New York, could be Boston, could be anywhere. Just you're going to come back completely different uh, voice just for that yeah, one okay. uh, review. You know, I'll get that done in the off season next year then. Um, right, okay. Next game I am going to have a look at is a where are we going down the board a little bit here. Um, can't find it. No, there somewhere. Gone. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, actually, things have changed. All right, I might have to scrap this one. We'll we'll touch on the game, um, but it's a double header. Uh, it's now a double header between the Yankees and the Guardians. Um, which I haven't seen as today's game being called off then. Yeah. Cle From what I understand, Schmidt oh, is right, starting okay, game yeah. one. So the Yankees Guardians being postponed. Yeah, I think Schmidt's um, starting game one, and they're calling up some AAA guy to start game two. Yeah, it's Pe uh, Petit. Is it his name Cody? Yeah, Cody Petit. So it's Schmidt v. Carrasco, and then it's Petit v. McKenzie, which I now have nothing for, because I, I had Lewis um, Gill, Hill, yeah, uh, depending well, on your accent, uh, Lewis Hill going for the Yankees, and I like the Yankees. I like Lewis Hill. I thought he was going to go really well in turnover, uh, Tristan McKenzie, um, but now that is not the case. So we can scrub a line through that. Um, I have nothing on the Yankees at the Guardians. Do you have anything on either of those uh, two matchups, Scott? I'll fade the Triple A guy. Uh, I'll take Guardians first five in the other one. Uh, so whichever one. I mean, I'm not a big Schmidt guy either. So I think Cleveland's actually in a decent spot to. At, win at least one of these games, but you have a brand new guy or calling up last minute because of a double header. Yeah, that means the Yankees are borderline punting this game. So I don't mind the Guardians early fading the Triple A kit. Okay, so I've got a total um, next up for uh, one of my picks, and this just jumped off the page and hit me in the eye the minute uh, the minute I looked at it. The game is a eight ten Eastern first pitch. And it's the St. Louis Cardinals at the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, Kyle Gibson for the Cards, taking on Ryan Nelson for the Snakes. The total here is nine and a half, which is high. Um, but I just it just screamed over, it screamed runs. I mean, the, the two ERAs hit you in the face the minute you look at it. 
um, 6.23 for Gibson and 8.22 for Nelson. Um, one of Gibson's starts was OK, but he got lit up by Miami last time. Uh, and Miami have really struggled um, to put back to ball so far this year. And I've been out on Gibson for about two years. So the minute I see his name on the slate, I'm looking for an angle uh, which to fade him. Um, Ryan Nelson's ERA is age 22. Two games started. Two tricky games, I'll give him that. He's played at Atlanta uh, and at home to New York. Um, but both of these offences have been OK. Diamondbacks score tons of runs, even in defeat. Um, I just saw runs for both sides here, Scott. Um, and over nine and a half looks like a fair play. Uh, yeah, I also like the over. I was going to mention that, so I have nothing more to add. That was a play that I had on my list, too. Okay, go on then. You go next. Sure. Uh, so for the next one, it's always tricky when you have an immediate rematch for a pitcher where the team just saw this guy, and now you have to hope that they pitch well against the same team once again. But it's really a perfect combo. I got to go with Houston in the first five. I'll take Houston first five minus a half. Uh, Blanco, Blanco's been great, uh, just simply put. He's been really – in fact, he's not allowed to run. He's basically allowed no hits in almost every inning he's been in so far this season. But you're looking at Heaney, who I don't think is any good. And I think that he has had a couple of decent moments with the Dodgers. He was okay, I guess. But it's just such a massive pitching advantage for for Houston. I don't trust the bullpen. So I'm going to stick with the first five. But I don't have a first five line. I know the money line right now is at about minus 145. So if you end up getting the first five minus a half, you might get around like minus 110, minus 105, maybe even even money. I'll take that with Blanco. He's been really good. I'll fade Heaney, who I think can get shelled here. Uh, give me Houston uh, to get the job done in the first five. Yeah, the second half of the card that I looked at got a little bit chalky for me and um, with my picks. And this was one of the plays in there, one of the chalk plays, and it was Houston. Uh, the word I used for these two pitches, I put Blanco's interesting and Heaney isn't, uh, yeah. where you went with good and bad. But I just looked at that. And Blanco, I mean, obviously the no-hitter is a thing. Uh but he's kind of backed it up as well before and after. Absolutely fine. Um, and just a little bit bored of Heaney. You kind of know what you're going to get. Um, Houston, not as yet, but are traditionally a little bit better against the lefties. Um, so factor that in as well. And you did mention the bullpen, the Houston bullpen. And I think the first five games that they lost, when they were struggling, the bullpen lost them all, the starting pitcher. Yeah. I had kept them in it. In all of those games, so but I do think Houston's bullpen win, will figure it out. That it's not going to be a long term problem. So I'm happy to trust that as well. So yeah, um, it's not big or clever, but I think uh, minus one forty uh, for Houston is a very fair price. And uh, next up, uh, you go next, Scott Wasnagan. All right. Uh, so for the next one, I'm trying to think of which one I want to go with here, but. Um, I mean, I don't see any lines on it. I am tempted by that over in the Red Sox game when that does get posted. Uh, what else do I want? Um, okay. What's well, tricky when you don't have lines on some of these? Uh, I don't mind actually looking at a matchup between the Braves and the Marlins. Do I blindly take Atlanta minus one and a half with Sale on the mound on the road? It's minus 115. Like, I don't think Meyer's that great of a pitcher. Sale so far this season has been fine, I believe. So I think I am going to go with it. The Braves have really been okay to start the season. They are 7-4, and four, so that's fine. But we thought it, we thought they might get off to an extremely hot start, and they've been okay so far. But you're looking at Sale so far this season, and he's been okay. He's got a 3.38 ERA. Uh, you have Max Meyer, a relative unknown for Miami, who's pitching pretty well this season, as he has a 2.45 ERA. But it's mostly fading a team that's 0-7 at home. They're 0-7 at home, and I can get the Braves minus 1.5 and and minus 115. You get this matchup in two months, in the middle of the summer, Atlanta run line has to be like minus 130. Minus 110, minus 115 is a great price as far as I'm concerned. I'll fade the 0-7 team at home. I'll take the Braves minus 1.5. It just, yeah. I looked at it. It just seemed far too obvious. It had the look of a trap about it. Um, I just thought Atlanta were far too short because Maya might make it hard. Maya, there's a little unknown factor uh, yeah. with Maya, which 
Because, like I said, Atlanta, they've been good. They haven't been brilliant. They haven't been a stellar best. Um, Miami are oh, looking a little Acuna's bit has been off better. to a slow start, so we'll see if he gets it going. Yeah. Um, Tim Anderson is starting to look like the player he used to be, maybe at the plate. And Max Meyer's gone well twice. He's he quite a highly thought of um, prospect. I think he maybe got injured um, early last season, missed a little bit of time, and we never saw him again. But Maya might make it hard. So this was, I've got this 14th on my list because really, apart from the Boston game, which is a TBD picture, this was the game that I wanted little to do with. Just I thought Atlanta were way, way, way too short. But if you have to pick a player, I think there's only one player you can pick and that's the one you've gone for, Scott. Um, but it's not something I'll be, uh, I'll be rushing to the window to get involved with. Um, Okay. Where are we going to well, go one next? Thing I also wanted to add, I guess one of the perks yeah. of, of actually rooting for a team is that I get to watch their games and watch the other team come into town. Yeah, I watched Miami over the last, like, two, three days. I I'm good. Like, yeah, 2-11. and 11. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I'll go with Atlanta. Yeah. They, they were awful uh, for most of that series. They ended up stealing the final game of that series. But they just can't hit with guys on base. The at-bats are poor. I like Berger a lot. Berger's really good. Arise has been quiet. You mentioned Anderson. He's been okay. Uh, Del Cruz has been okay, too, but that's basically it. I mean, Bell's done nothing, just going down the line. Chisholm has some flash plays. I kind of wish I saw it on a more regular basis. They're just not a good baseball team, just simply put. So that's the last point I'll make. I think the positive for Miami is that they get pitches back, and they get pitches back next week. They get Braxton Garrett, who we like. They get Edward mm -hmm. Cabrera. Um, and the might oh, be a pure, more they're a pure under team. They can't hit. Like it's going to be a pure yeah. under team for the next couple months. But hopefully, if the if the pitches start to keep them in it, then maybe the hitters will start to bear down a little bit more and think that they're going to be in a game. Uh, you might get some more competitive at bats out of the hitters um, if Garrett and Cabrera can come and make a little difference. But yeah, we are sort of clutching at straws a little bit uh, with that sort of analysis. So Scott, I agree with you. Um, to be honest, I don't, I don't care if Miami looks good or not the rest of the way. They've already lost seven straight. So you've done, I've, I've yeah, already wiped my hands clean. Yeah. You broke, you broke the MLB gambling podcast record for a preseason. But I thought I was pretty safe when I cashed the Baltimore over in like August two years ago. And you've blown me out of the water by five months, Scott. So, yeah, that's going to take some beating um, to get one in the first week next season. Um, we've got a new sponsor here. Uh which we're very happy about and proud to partner up with Avo, uh, the premier sports betting arbitrage too. This would be great, Scott. I keep saying when I do this ad, it's a great tennis kind of thing because it's a two-outcome sport. Uh, there's no draw like in football. And arbitrage betting, when you've got two pure outcomes uh, like you have done in tennis, is absolutely brilliant. Um, you're basically taking both sides of a bet at two different sports books and locking in a profit. Um, the AVO tool scans the sports books looking for discrepancies in the odds and then tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book and the expected profit. The tool is super easy to use and light and fast. Uh, speed is of the essence uh, when you're doing arbitrage sports betting. There's a lot of shrewdies out there snapping up the prices. And currently, AVO is free to use without restrictions. Uh, so get started today at arbsversusodds.com. That is A R B S V S O D D S dot com. Arbs versus odds dot com. Okay. I'm going to go to, I think this is the first game off tomorrow. A uh, bit of day ball, quite a lot of day ball actually tomorrow. Uh, and it's the Kansas City Royals at the New York Mets. Um, the pitching matchup is Alec Marsh for Kansas City and the lefty Sean Manaya. Um, Myself and Dylan sat here last night. It's a very similar type of matchup tonight and very similar odds. Uh, Kansas City around about plus 130 for the Friday night game. It's Michael Wacker versus Severino. Um, and we both liked Kansas City in what we thought might be a bit of a shootout. And I just think at these prices at plus 135, I think you have to side with the Royals again. Um, I think they're the better team. The Mets have sprung into life this week, thankfully, um, because Dylan was looking more and more woeful as the week went on. Um, but I do like Alec Marsh, and I sat here and said that last week when I had no evidence to back that up. 
And actually, he pitched really well, and I got a win out of him, and I was pleased. Um, so really, I feel obliged to go back to the well again. There's nothing between these two teams, and I don't think there's much between the two pitches. The Royals at plus 135, Scott. Looks like a nice dog play to me. Yeah, the Mets are getting a lot of respect because they were really good against Atlanta, which kind of surprised some people because they got off to a really bad start the season. They got swept by the Tiger. Oh, yeah, it looked, it looked rough uh, early, and then they kind of figured it out offensively. Uh, DJ Stewart had a couple home runs yesterday. Shout out to him. Yeah. So a bit of a surprise there. But I thought about the under in this game, but the wind is blowing out heavily to left field. I mean, to right field. So that might impact something. I don't want to officially, I don't want to say like release a secret here, but I'm trying to figure out a trend that I'm on. And we're going to test it out tonight with Severino. I'm looking at the outs recorded prop for okay. Mets pitchers. I like the under. I, and maybe it's just a coincidence, and I do want to point this out because, once again, I'm still flushing out the actual uh, effectiveness of it. But the Mets have played 12 games this season. Do you want to guess how many times a Mets starting pitcher has completed six full innings? I'm guessing it's something agreed. I'm going to say zero. It's one. Okay. One time. So I'm testing it out tonight. Severino's outs were at 17 and a half. I'm on the under. It was like minus 125. We're going to test it out. I don't know if it's an analytical approach, just based on not wanting the starting pitcher to face a lineup three times, or if it's the yeah. fact that the Mets rotation is just not very good. But Quintana's been solid. Manaya went over this number one time. He was the only guy who went over, and he had like six basically perfect innings. He gave up like one hit, no runs. He pitched a gem. So with the wind blowing out, I am kind of wondering if this is a Mets analytical approach where they really don't want starters to face a lineup three times. So I am trying to test it out. Once again, we're in the beginning stages. I'll let you know how it goes tonight. But Manaya under-recorded outs, I think, might be a tempting play. That, Scott, is the bet I have written in my little Scott box that I had uh, portioned off on my pad. Um I've got that. I wrote down Severino under Manaya outs. Yellow highlighter. You've got the, the magic yellow number though is 17 and a half because that would be six full innings. So it's yeah, a little a bit lot, iffy in between, but most of the starters have gone five, like a flat five. So we're going to test that out. Your boots over there, Scott. Will you see all lines on those? Will you be able to go to 16 or 15, or do you just have to take that one line? It's whatever ones they give you. I believe for the playoffs, you might occasionally. Get an alt outs line, but for the most part, no. For the most part, it's just whatever number they give you. Here you go. Um, because the book I'm using three six five over here. They've started giving. Um, so what I was looking at primarily was this Ryan Feltner play tonight, and the over under was at um, three and a half, but it was juiced to minus one sixty. But they have a, a, a pit milestone, what they call milestone props, so you can just get the pitcher to strike out. Three, four, five, six, seven. So you can pretty much cover the full gamut. Um, four outs, four strikeouts, for all sorts. And it's quite new. Um, and it's a, I've, I've really enjoyed playing them. Just it gives you a little bit more. If you don't want to take a minus 130, minus 140, like so I can get felt now that extra K tonight takes me up to plus 130. Um, so I've been enjoying those. Um, okay, Ja plays has joined us. Uh, here's Ja, how are you? Um, Chuck us a chuck us a bet in the in the chat, Joe. If you've got any, uh, Scott, we're getting into what I would call the bottom draw now. Maybe the uh, the final third of the games where we're we're in the dregs. Anything catch your eye down here? Yeah, it feels like round fourteen of like a fantasy football draft. Uh, you're just trying to find <laughs> yeah. something. You're trying to find something that might stick. Uh, yeah. So for this one, I once again we are missing some lines. A lot of wind blowing out. By the way, it might be a pretty decent home okay. run day uh, tomorrow. I think I'm looking at the Nationals Oakland game. I might nice. actually go with the over in this one, uh, which might sound like a hot take because both these teams absolutely suck. Uh, but you have Gore against Boyle. Gore's was is a pretty interesting prospect because he's been hyped up for so long. He was in the Soto trade, and he just has really not been good. Just simply put, he just has not been a very good pitcher, and he was hyped up for a while. Uh, but you're looking at who's pitching for Oakland, and you have Boyle on the mound, who's a pretty unknown uh, commodity here, but his ERA is 8.22. Point is, both pitchers aren't very good, and the wind's blowing out heavily to left field. Gore's a lefty, so that is going to help out uh, the Oakland lineup. 
Maybe Langolier goes uh, Langoliers goes yard, but the line's at eight. I'll take the over. Uh, Oakland's been competitive, though. A shout out to them for actually not being a total embarrassment. They're lo- they're covering the reverse run line. They've been covering the plus one and a half a decent amount, but I like the over in this game. Both pitchers aren't very good. Wind's blowing out. I'll lean to the over. Uh, I mean, both teams are being competitive. F- five and seven, Washington. Five and eight, yeah. Oakland. Um, but yeah, this game. I mean, Mackenzie Cole, he still gets talked about. Even our preseason shows when we got on to Washington or whatever. People in the chat straight away, someone would put up Mackenzie Gore. Mackenzie Gore would be in there. Um, and he still gets that sort of rookie prospect kind of chat about him. Um, but the upside is there. It's like, that's great. We're in like year three. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, like, yeah. I don't know what that but means. It's been there for four years now, whatever yeah. it is. Um, I've got. Washington here is minus 130. I did say, like I say, this bottom half of the card for me got a little bit chalky. I've got one, two, three, sort of three chalk money line plays. Houston being one, um, Washington being one here at minus 130, just because of the presence of Joe Boyle, who actually I think there might be the odd day um, when I'll take Joe Boyle, um, but not until um, he shows me something. Um, I'll go next with the... uh, I, talk, I said that I've got three chalk money line plays. One of them was Houston. One of them was Washington. And the third one here down the bottom is the Baltimore Orioles. Um, they play um, at home to the Brewers, um, which is a 4 or 5 Eastern first pitch. A quite interesting pitcher for Milwaukee here. It's D.L. Hall, um, left-handed pitcher. D.L. Hall, was he part of the... Uh, Corbin Burns trade, I believe. He so, honestly might have been. I don't have that in front of me. So I think he, I think he, was. I think you, I um, think you're right, but I, I can't confirm that. So what I need to establish here for you American people: does this count as a revenge game or not? Because I'm never sure what the rules are. Uh sure. It, well, it depends. <laughs> are you backing Milwaukee? Or are you backing Baltimore? No, I'm taking Baltimore. Then no, then it doesn't count as a okay. revenge game. So Doesn't you only use it you. when it supports your narrative. That's really the secret. All right, okay. Uh, well, I don't need him then. But he's interesting picture, a really well thought of prospect. Um, I don't think he broke camp with the team, uh, but injuries have got him up here pretty quick. But I do like Dean Kramer uh, for Baltimore. The the middle of this Baltimore rotation, they've got very a lot of very similar pitches. Um, and Kramer started just as you expect him to. Um, Brewers have been uh, treble, tell you. Uh, Brewers have been surprisingly good, uh, particularly offensively. Um, But I just think Kramer here over Hall, um, interesting price, minus 140. Uh, So, yeah, a little bit boring, uh, but I'll take Baltimore over the Brewers there, Scott. Uh, Yeah, I think that pitching matchup should be fun. Baltimore has actually been a very good live betting team this season. They're really good in the late innings. They've had a couple comeback wins. They yeah. uh, had a nice extra innings win against the Red Sox uh, yesterday. Fun moment there where Reese McGuire got ejected uh, with arguing balls and strikes, and they didn't have a bench player. So they couldn't – they they were just short a guy. They, they, had to, they had to throw in – like, I forgot who exactly came in, but uh, Reese McGuire got ejected uh, arguing balls and strikes when they had nobody left on the bench, which I thought was – Oh, I didn't say that at all. So what? Did you play with eight then? Uh, no, they didn't play with eight. I'm trying to remember if they brought in like a pitcher or somebody to play, or if he was oh, DHing. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. But I remember that they had nobody left on the bench, and he got ejected. So I want to quickly pull that up, actually. But I remember that was the interesting development in that game, or the fun like niche uh, fact from yesterday's games. But uh, McGuire got ejected. They brought in a pitcher. Uh, they brought in right. uh, Campbell. Uh, to play, which is pretty funny because McGuire's the starting catcher. So they had to move Wong to catcher, who pinch hit earlier, and they used the pitcher uh, to, I think, play the infield because they were short again. Oh, nice. So, there oh, you that go. is fun. I like that. I'm all for that. Um, right, Scott, where, where are you going next? Uh, so this is our last pick, I think. I've got one, two, three games, Scott. Yeah. Oh, Unless wait, we, so we've, we'll, put a line through, we'll put a line through Angels Boston. Because we've got no Boston pitcher, so not much to tell you about that. Griffin Cannon going for the Angels, but that's about all. Um, and yeah, so three three games left. Okay, 
Uh, I know we weren't trying to cover all the games, though. That's why I'm trying to remember oh, what okay. exactly the plan is. Because I was, I was going to do some player props, potentially, but unfortunately, we might not have lines on those. So I don't know if I can get away with it. Uh, but anyway, uh, looking at the actual card, trying to think of whatever we have left. I mean, can I just pick a game with no line and just take the over in the Boston game? Yeah. Because I, I just, just want did. the over. Yeah, just, just simply <laughs> okay. uh, the, the Red Sox um, pitching so has not been very good this season. That Orioles series was a mess. Uh, they gave up seven runs in all three games, uh, nine runs in the last game. Went to extras, but it was still 4-4. Give me the over. Uh, the Angels offensively have not been very good. Trout keeps hitting solo home runs, but the Red Sox can't pitch. And you're looking at Canning pitching for the Angels. We've seen this before. Uh, Canning's not very good. Uh, 8.3 ERA this season. It's just an issue of stuff. I just don't think he's got dynamic stuff when it comes to his pitches. So I like the over in that game. I'll go off the board, kind of. Give me an unlisted over on the Red Sox-Angels game. Unlisted over. Um, the three games we've got left are actually all three fairly decent uh, pitching matchups here. We've got Pittsburgh at Philly. Uh, we have uh, Marco Gonzalez against Spencer Turnbull. Spencer Turnbull's another one who every year, I reckon I've read about 200 articles on Spencer Turnbull on the waiver wire. Because um, after a couple of weeks, oh, Spencer Turnbull's back. Have you noticed Spencer Turnbull's back? Have you seen Spencer Turnbull's spring training? And this has gone on for years and years and years. And this is the trap because he started really quite well again, um, as has Gonzalez. Um, one or both of them is due a blow up. Absolutely. The total on this game is nine and a half tomorrow. Um, so I think both pitchers um, could get a say. They could both blow up. Uh, but that just looked like an overall, though. Philly are concerning me a little bit um, with their bats because it's long ball or nothing at the moment. Um, we said that last but year. I, do think I'm, I wrote to them for that in the playoffs yeah. last year. They, they don't generate anything besides home runs. So that is a concern. But I do think, like I say, one or both. I just can't. I've hovered, My fingers hovered over Turnbull's name in a couple of my fantasy leagues about three times this week. And I just can't bring myself to click the button um, because I've been burned on that one before. Um, Pittsburgh at Philly, any thoughts on this one, Scott? I mean, I think there's value on the dog. I think Philly's a massive favorite, and they've been a bit underwhelming this season. I do think Turnbull's better than Gonzalez. But, I mean, it's a decent price. Like, Pittsburgh's been okay this season. They've been fine. I think they can hang in there. And I think plus 125 is a pretty intriguing line. Yeah. Maybe a team total over or something, but Turnbull's been great. You're expecting some regression, but Gonzalez has been good too. So maybe you lean under. Nine and a half is a bit of a high total, but I said the wind's blowing out in basically every single game uh, for Saturday. I'll lean to Pittsburgh uh, just based on the value. Uh, maybe Philly's bullpen explodes and you can cash that way. But I think the price is off. Exactly the same tonight's game, the Friday night game, Bailey Fulter against Christopher Sanchez. Um, I had the same handicap last night. Scott, I think you have to take Pittsburgh. There's nothing really between them. And a, tonight, the plus 140. Saturday night, the plus 125. They'll win one of those two games, uh, if not both. Um, the penultimate game uh, we'll get to is an interesting matchup between uh, the Giants and the Rays. Uh, good pitching matchup. Logan Webb, uh, the kind of the known quantity uh, here. And Ryan Pepiot. Another one who gets quite a lot of chat. Uh, came across from the Dodgers to the Rays. Um, has started okay, and I do like him. Um, and the totals, though, yeah, the totals, it's seven and a half. But I, I can see a little bit of a pitch and duel developing here uh, between Webb and Pepiot. And I add this down as the first five under, Scott. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I like Logan Webb a lot. Uh, the fact that he keeps the ball in the ballpark helps. I like the under. Uh, you hit everything that I wanted to say about the game. Uh, the Giants are an offense that I don't think is very good. And uh, Tampa's offense is not great either. Uh, so I see a lower scoring game. I like both pitchers in this game. I like Logan Webb more. They're just a bigger sample size. Uh, but I do think that both pitchers are solid. I like the first five under two. And the final game, Scott, uh, certainly uh, not the least interesting on the on the slate here, nine tennis and first pitch between the Padres and the Dodgers because it's two young guys here. It's uh, Matt Waldron, who a knuckleball drew pitcher. a lot of interest in spring training. Again, he didn't break camp, but is now up. Um, and we have Gavin Stone, who 
we've talked about uh, as a as a prospect and a rookie. Um, hasn't started great for the Dodgers, but this is a, a two young guys here in two teams that have probably seen more of each other than any other two teams in MLB so far this season, Scott. Uh, yeah, so Waldron's a knuckleball pitcher, uh, so that's always fun. I'm going to lean Padres. I feel like it's pretty similar to how we talked about the Rockies-Blue Jays game. I'm not laying 200 with Gavin Stone. Uh, that, that's just not going to happen. He's been really bad, uh, even dating back to last year. Now, he can definitely improve. He's still 25. But when you've made six career starts and your career ERA is 8.77, I'm not going to pick you minus 200. It, it's just not going to happen. Now, are the Dodgers a better team? Of course. They're the best team in the league on paper. But I got to at least acknowledge that Stone has not been good time and time again. Is Waldron good? I don't know. But preparing for a knuckleballer is kind of impossible. So it's always an interesting, I'd say, dynamic when you have a knuckleball pitcher when there's so few of them left in the majors because how do you take batting practice for a knuckleball pitcher? I don't know. What are you going to do? You're just going to see a ball just floating around. You just hope that you could hit it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe he surprises them. I don't mind the Padres' first five, but I know Stone – it's just not very good. Give me the value here. San Diego money line is plus 165. Hell yeah, I'll take yeah. that. I think it's a good deal. I completely and utterly agree with you. Um, I handicapped this this afternoon before I'd seen the price. And my final line says, I'll take the Padres if they're a nice price, plus 125, question mark. So I was happy to take them around about that price. Um, I'm now getting plus 170. Um, I did hear the Padres beat reporter. Um saying he watched Waldron through a bullpen, and the catcher didn't catch any of them. He said yeah. he just couldn't catch it. I don't know who it was. If it was Camposano or whoever else they've got. Did they got Gary there, Sanchez? There was, uh, there was an old story. Do you remember, Bo you know Bob Euchre, who was the uh, Brewers yes. broadcaster? Do, do, yeah. He's in the movie Major League, if you ever saw that movie. Right, he okay. Played. Okay, so he was a catcher back in the day. And they asked him a question. If, you know, I heard you used to catch Sandy Koufax. Uh, you know, how'd you do? He's like, yeah, I would uh, let the ball roll to the backstop, and then I'd run and pick it up. <laughs> yeah, Same idea with Waldron. Nobody can catch him. The only guy um, who, I, who I actually could think of as a knuckleball specialist catcher was Doug Mirabelli, who used to catch Wakefield back with Boston. Yeah. He was like the only knuckleball exclusive catcher that I could think of. But Euchre had that joke uh, with Sandy Koufax that had you catch him, oh, I would just wait for the ball to hit the backstop, and I would just run and get it. And that's kind of the same idea with catching a knuckleballer in today's baseball. Because what's the catcher supposed to do? You have one knuckleballer in the entire league. So hopefully not many pass balls. Maybe, you know, you got a couple. But I'll lean to Waldron here. There's one lad who plays for the Nighthawks, Scott. He was from L.A. And, and when we're warming up, you just grab a partner to start playing catchers. And he will throw knuckleballs at you. And it absolutely boils my piss. Because I'm, I'm an old man who's... Not great to start with. Um, and he's got these things wobbling around. He's an absolute madman. He's the lad who, when he first joined the club two years ago, he said he needed a lift home. And I asked him where he lived. And he replied, inland. Okay. What am I meant to do with that? I mean, <laughs> and it's a small it's, country. It sounds like it's open to interpretation. He's, yeah, it's a small country, but I need more than inland uh, for where I'm going to take him home. He did live inland, it turns out, but, you know, um, yeah, well, I need a little bit more than that. At least he didn't live in sea. There you go. Thank you. I'll be here so, all week. Uh, Write that down. So that's, a good, well, that's a good British joke right there. Write that down. Very good. Uh, um, to, yeah, too close to feeds for Waldron, but at plus 170, I'm happy to give him a little go, yeah. Uh, so there you go. And, Scott, we have meandered through... A 15 game or a 16 game uh, MLB card. I know we uh, jumped from here to there, but it's a Friday night. It's uh, come as you please. It's a free and easy night. And we've covered everything. I mean, are we doing locks and dogs, Scott? We can, we're can. we making the rules up as we go. Do you want to throw some out? We can if you want to. To be honest, I'm still confused by the format you proposed because you said five best bets each because you were running late and we covered every game. So I don't even know what the point was. But yeah, I'm happy we covered five best bets each. No, but I've got five picks here with like half a page of notes. I oh, know, I know. The rest, I just initially, just... I thought the point was we were going to basically chop a couple of games, just do five picks and get out of here. And we covered the entire card. So I don't really know what the point was, but I had fun. I had fun doing it. Oh, that's all right. That's what we're here for. Um, miscommunication. We're making, we're making good time anyway. Was, so was always going to get to all the, uh, all the games. 
Um, Randy's locked them all up, so he's not bothered about a lock and a dog. Um, let's have a look around. I think well, I've got two dogs here, the Rockies or the Padres. I think I prefer, or oh, I don't know. Let's go with the Rockies. But Francis is, he or is 12 something. Um, so let's go with Colorado to win at Toronto. I really wanted to lock up Lewis Hill. And the Yankees, but he is now gone. Um, oh, what's uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. I like him in Arga and the Cubs. Captain Insano was in there straight away. You called it. Um, and I like him in Arga. Minus 120, a better price than I had as well. I had them near a minus 140. So I'll lock up the Cubbies and I'll take the Rockies as my underdog, Scott. Yeah, those are going to be my plays. So and I got to now I got to think about some <laughs> yes. stuff. Uh, yeah, you I, I got to think about this now. Um, for the lock, I don't have a number, but I really do like crochet strikeouts. I don't know okay. what line it's going to be, though. That, that's kind of the problem, because the red strike out a ton. And crochet is really, really good. Uh, so I thought about that as an angle, but I don't know what numbers would be. Do you, you want to guess? Oh, well, she? Ooh. Yeah. Six and a half? Six and a half? Yeah, maybe. I'll take the over. I mean, struck out eight against Detroit, struck out eight against Atlanta. That's a hell of a showing there. Uh, only struck out five against the Royals, but he only pitched five innings. So I'll go with Crochet Strikeouts as my lock there. Uh, for uh, for my dog, I mean, I was going to take the Rockies too based on price. So I'm trying to think if there's an angle that I want to take for... Uh, I mean, player props are going to be tricky because I don't have a price. So I think we're just going to double up on the Rockies. I just think that Toronto is a team that I don't exactly trust by any means. And Dakota Hudson has been good. So I'll take the Rockies. Okay. Double bubble on the Rockies. Um, Randy's asking me for a home run play uh, for Friday night. I've pulled Edward Olivares. Go on, my son. Uh, Edward Olivares. I'm just trying to uh, find a price here. Picture. Nope. Player home runs, here we go. Edward Olivares is 11 to 2, plus 550 uh, for over half a home run. Uh, so there's your play for tonight, Randy. Um, Scott, that was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, anything else you want to tell the people before we let them go? Uh, yeah, you give out a home run option, so I guess I'll give out a home run option. Oh, let me just quickly see what I got. Uh, for home runs tonight, if I'm pick, you, you gave out a 550. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'll go back to the guy that's been in really good form this season. Give me Yelich at plus 550. Nice. Yeah, Yelich is uh he's been one of the one of the reasons that the Brewers have been good along with a lot of the young lads. That's a great play, mate. Well done. Um thanks for that, Scott. It was good. Uh Christopher uh, has joined us for the last 10 seconds of the show. Christopher, how are you doing? Uh thanks everyone who did join us. Uh enjoyed it. Appreciate your input. Uh, Randy, Trev, Captain Insano, uh, the Four Cliff Certified Gambling Podcast. Jar Place was in earlier on as well. Um, back on Sunday night, ready to tackle the rest of the week. In the meantime, uh, Premier League Gambling Podcast. Go and listen to that. Loads of games tomorrow. Um, good luck with all your Masters picks. And let's cash all of these baseball bets. Uh, Scott, thank you very much. I will speak to you soon enough. Uh, thanks, everybody else. Um, good luck. And we will see you down the road. Cheers.